Right, okay, thank you for joining The Average Golfer for another episode of my little meetings with the course managers of some very prominent clubs in and around the UK and Ireland. I was up at uh, Gullen last week with Stuart Dove, and I'm with another Stuart, it's Stuart Hogg, and I'm at West Lancashire Golf Club over on the Southport coast. So first of all, Thank you for spending some time with us. No problem, me, Stuart. Glad to have you back. Uh, yeah, well, I've I've, uh, I've known Stuart for I think just working out maybe four or five years, and um, one of the questions that uh, I'll start with is uh, I first met you at uh, how, how long have you been at West Lancs? Uh, been here yeah, now just under four years. Four years in my April of. Uh, Started so, and prior to that, and that's where I first met you was St Anne's Old Links, Saint just Anzold. up at uh, Lytham. And we were there, I was there for 11 years, okay. So, yeah, a bit of, bit of links on the, on the northwest coast of England. Yeah, so, that's sort of, and, and before that, what was your what was your uh, I was course before? manager up at for Trozen Rose Market up in the Black Isle, up right. in the north of Scotland, just opposite Castle Stewart. So, it all started up in Scotland then. Uh, it all started, but not at, not at Fortrose. I oh, was. Right. Uh, I started my apprenticeship at West Bride, right, over on the west coast uh, of Ayrshire, uh, which was a championship links, uh, yeah. which held the Scottish boys for a number of years uh, when I started my apprenticeship. So many years' experience now in this game. Uh, just over thirty now. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. Well, I know that feeling. <laughs> I, I was going to start with the question: Does your name have to be Stuart and Scottish to be a course <laughs> manager? Because that's all I've got to so far. I have to see what episode three gets us to. Um, one of the things I remember was that uh, you were you hold the title of a Master Greens man, is that right? Or? Yeah, my title, well, I wouldn't say it's my title, but I, I did the qualification through Bega as uh, for Master Greenkeeper. Yes. Uh, I did that way back in 2004. Yeah. Uh, it's, I'm a promoter and it's, I think it's a great uh, personal development. Uh, it's not for everybody and I, I totally understand that. It was something that I tried and I wanted to try and achieve and after a lot of hard work uh, I managed to get that so that was a bit back. Which is fantastic because there's only again a certain amount in, in, the, in the world or? Yeah I believe I think from what I've just read I think somebody's just passed here so I think we're either at 72 73 I was number 37 that's right. my claim to fame. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from the research that I've done and I unofficially confirmed by B I think I'm the only guy in Lynx a Lynx golf course that's actually oh, that's uh, qualified. I might be wrong and yeah, yeah. to be proven wrong. Ah, nice though, nice though. Uh, a couple of easy questions to start this uh, whole thing off. Aside from West Lanks, favourite golf course yourself personally? Ah, uh, it's got to be Royal Buckdale. Right, not uh, too far away then? No, I just love the track. Uh, I've, I've walked at it for the Open in 2008. Uh, my claim to fame was we were, I was cutting greens when uh, on the 17th, my greens were 16, 17 and 18. Hmm. Uh, I've got to say it's one of the hardest greens I've ever hand cut. Right. With, with all the new design, I know they've changed it since then. But I just love, I love the views of uh, walking around it. It's tranquil, the tough conditions, fantastic. Uh, I love the area. Uh, I just That'd be top of the list. It'd be top of the list for me. And away from golf now. About football, do you bother with football? Scottish accent there, got to be a... Yeah, it's uh, the blue side of Glasgow, I'm right. afraid. Yeah, uh, yeah. But we're doing okay. Well, you've got uh, the right man in charge. Yeah, Mr yeah. Gerrard's doing okay. Yeah. Big game uh, coming up, so yeah. yeah. No. The trouble been... is you can't talk football on these channels because <laughs> I, I end up losing half the people that watch it. Uh, I'm a Liverpool fan, so half the Man United and Evertonians, they all switch off at this point, so. But there you go. Uh, more serious stuff, back onto uh, this place, West Lanks itself. Um, how would you describe the challenge that you faced out West Langs? Maybe in terms of where <coughs> it is and, and, and where, when it was when you, you got here? Uh, yeah, West Langs is it's steeped in history. Uh, when the job came up, uh, obviously it was uh, a sad loss to the club that uh, the previous course manager passed away. Uh, and I was honoured to, to, take, to get the chance to take over from here. Uh, the, the club had gone through a few tough years uh, and they changed sort of direction of how the place was managed and obviously I was very pleased to be appointed to be part of that uh, change. Uh, golf course side of things, it's just a phenomenal golf course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, every hole is different. Uh, I think nobody really appreciates what a tough golf course is until you come and play. Oh, yeah. uh, 
I can vouch for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've we've it's been an exciting last few years here, yeah. and I'm looking forward to the next few what years. I'm going forward. Um, I mean, what you've probably made a lot of changes in the four years, but what are the kind of major things that stick out for you? That you I made? I think a lot of the changes probably bunkering at the first. We've uh, tried to bring it back into more realistic of what the course is about. Uh, second tee, one of the things that I think even the members noticed was that oh, we, we knew we were next to the sea compared to maybe the rest of the courses up this coast, uh, but nobody ever saw it until they played the fourth. So uh, we, put, we put a development plan together uh, over a four or five year period. And last year we opened up the dunes on the second and uh, the, the, the members, the visitors. Uh, so you can, from that new, it, it's an elevated position, isn't it? I, yeah, but we opened up the dunes, so the even off the yellow tees now you can see you can the sea and right. you feel the sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so which is, I mean, to be fair, all adds to that whole links experience, doesn't it? It's nice yeah. to see that and hear it. And yeah, I mean, it's be, I mean, we've got uh, some days are, are really calm and lovely, especially after this year. Yeah. Uh, but when it when it blows, you, you know it, it you, you know it's you blowing. Know, you know where you're at. All <laughs> yeah. Of a sudden, yeah, you've got a game in place. Um, plans for the future for the course? Have you got? Have uh, you got your five year plan? You yeah, we've we really we really moved that on really quickly. Uh, the staff have, have done really well. The club have, have backed us, and we've had sort of a couple of uh, when I say decent winters. Yes, last year was wet, but for us being on sand, we've, we've, yeah, we've, we've played through it. Uh, this year's been really mild as well, which is fortunate. Uh, so that so gives you the extra months to work? Yeah, we've, we've managed to play through a bit more work. And uh, so the, the plan is, with us being awarded uh, the Amateur Championship with, along with Royal Workdale in 2020, the plan was always to have next season as a, as a, a quiet year, a, t a tinkering year, I would okay. say. Uh, after that, then there was plans possibly to bring in an architect to give us a another updated view. Right, uh, okay. I don't want a Stuart Hogg golf course. I don't want West Lancaster doesn't deserve a Stuart Hogg golf course or a a, a Greens Committee golf course. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's too you know it's too much historic yes. uh, value for that. So I'm looking at maybe trying to promote bringing in an Bring architect. Then, yeah. And then we can move that forward or evaluate from there, yeah. from there and yeah, see yeah. what a, a different set of ICs yeah, yeah. And, you, and, and take the club forward. Which is always interesting, isn't it? Like you say, from another man's perspective, yeah, I love yeah. that sort of skill level. And, yeah, and it's and it's not personal to somebody yeah, that's that, that's it should be attached impartial. in some way. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point as well. Um, I met you mentioned this year how challenging for this track with the we had an extremely dry weather in the UK that is. So uh, yeah, I mean we're used to dry. Uh, our average rainfall is around about five seventy. Uh, 570 miles, so we're normally pretty dry compared to some other places. However, uh, we were we were looking great. We were playing great right up until sort of middle of July. Right. Uh, unfortunately, because of the temperatures that we were getting, we had to make a decision. Our water license didn't allow us to go any further right. on fairway irrigation. So, yeah, so we had to greens. decide greens. Uh, look after look yeah. after your babies. I yeah. call them and. Uh, we had to make a decision on that, so we have lost a lot of grass coverage in the yeah, fairies. Yeah, yeah. I know we're not the only one in no, the country. No, a lot have been affected, yeah. Uh, but that's what's sort of killed us this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we've got a lot of remedial work to do, hopefully in a decent spring, but I have my doubts. So I think yeah, it's yeah. been too mild coming up yeah. to now. A couple of clubs I've, I've, been, I've been to recently have had a similar problem, not too far away, North Wales Coast Club, I play as well down in the Wirral. Some of them have gone to mats for protecting fairies, does that? Is that a good move? Or uh, I, I've got. To, I, I try and look at it as a business as well, and the members are paying their, yeah, their yeah, money. I'm not happy with that. Uh, so you know, to be fair to West Lancs, and I can only talk for West Lancs, they've given me the money for next year to yeah. to move it forward. We've not uh, scrimped and scraped. We've put a budget in. They've accepted it, and so you're getting back. Well, we, we should, you know, it will take. We're, yeah, yeah, always relying. We're, we're relying on on upstairs. Yeah, but, uh, we've got things in place that we can we yeah. can move forward and which haven't been done in the past. Yeah. Uh, and we'll improve uh, our maintenance regimes on there. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to this plan. 
and just great greens in particular to the to the to the layman like myself who puts on them every week. It's just cutting the lawn, isn't it? It's it's simple as that. It's as that. <laughs> <laughs> it's that. Yeah, and I think any greenkeeper would tell you it's a lot more than that, and a lot more skill, passion, knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and a bit of good fortune as well from upstairs. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'd, I'd like to say that we're getting less and less chemicals and so you get more uh, techniques better, cultural methods are coming more forward. Right. Uh, and I think that's, but unfortunately, until we're all on the plain, same playing field, yeah, yeah. Uh, there'll always be people that uh, have to rely on chemicals more yeah, than, than right, cultural okay. methods, but we are, we're doing okay. Just, I, I did, uh, bit of work um, over in some sunny climates in Europe in the last month or so. How much easier, or how, the other way around, how much more difficult is it being a green key creator perhaps than... Um, I, it would be, I couldn't comment on that because I don't have the knowledge over there. Right. I can only surmise that we've just, as we've got the problems over here, the, the, they've got the problems the over heat. there. I mean, yeah. I was on holiday and I went round a, a golf course in the sunnier climates and you know, they've got their effluent water to deal with and, yeah. and, and pumping stations going down and stuff right. like that that they rely on. That yeah, so it's different challenges. Diff different challenges yeah. and I'm sure they're just as well trained uh, as, as well as the UK can Yeah, yeah. Us. What, again, specifically to the course, what, what sort of um, speed, average speed does, it, does the likes of West Ham throw on that? Uh, <coughs> to be honest, I don't really, I don't really use it. As a, as a speed, I use it as a as a more as a consistent scale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we aim to have sort of between nine and eight, nine and a half. Yeah. Uh, we can take them up to two minutes to ten and a half. We have gone to eleven, but as any guy in a Lynx golf course knows, the tide can change, the wind can turn, yeah. and the last thing you want is Get the a bit silly. tournament director on your case saying this yeah. is now unplayable. So, realistically, I think if you've got a good true from putting surface yeah, consistent. Uh, consistent around the golf course. Yeah, I think it outweighs any yeah, speed yeah. restrictions. Yeah, I agree with that. How much impact does a course manager have on, on a course design? And uh, you, 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 you mentioned it with the architect bit really. So. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm quite lucky this in the last two courses that I've done a, uh, here in St Anne's, I've done a, a, a bit. Uh, I've worked with Donald Steele. Uh, so I learned a bit with him in, in uh, 2007 when he came round at St Anne's, uh, and I think most greenkeepers have got a vision. Yeah. Uh, but like I said earlier, I think it's it's maybe not the way forward to put a personal design on it. Uh, I think we can all make pretty straightforward changes. Yeah. That we can all see that we all probably agree with, and that's what we've done here at West Lines, okay. uh, and that's why. It then gets down to, in my opinion, uh, personal preference, yeah. and that's why I don't think you should yeah, have yeah. members or a a committee a answer, yeah. uh, making a decision. Yeah, yeah. Because there's nothing that I will do will please 100% of the membership. Yeah, yeah. And nothing that, and what I do do, one member might love it, another member might yeah, not like it. Yeah. So I've always gone in the air, and if I can keep. Every member 80% happy. Yeah, you're doing all right. I'm doing all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think we've got to the stage now at West Lanks that we've done the changes that are, are pretty obvious. Yeah. Uh, and as I say, I would hate to see a committee 2018 design trying to take this place forward. I think yeah, it yeah. deserves better than No, I, I, I think it's great. And, and I think then there's a, there's a plan and, and uh, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be done there and then. But you can the other the plus the fact is you wouldn't get the blame uh, yeah down the line. Always get the blame. We're, 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 we're green keepers. We'll always get the blame. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I just think it's uh, it's from another as I said earlier as well. It's another set of eyes. Yeah, yeah. That do it for their living and um, it's that expertise again as well. Is yeah. it just a uh, what what I mean talking about uh, members uh, or golfers in general because we're all experts on the, uh, when we finish the round <laughs> why we missed the putt. Um, what are the most uh, I don't know whether it's the right way of word annoying assumptions that uh, regarding course condition that us I, I general think golfers make. To be honest, I think I think it is changing as you know uh, of members' perception. Yeah, which is is great for the industry. I'm sure you still have, have moans and groans why we hold the core, why we solid time, uh, why we top dress at certain mm. times, and it's just happens to be in the middle of your round of golf. Uh, 
But I do think with communication, with social media, uh, things that are becoming a bit more easier. As I say, certainly here the members are very receptive us, to us working, especially in the winter. Yeah. And uh, we've got a good relationship with them. Uh, I suppose it's that communication level as well, as they they're them understanding you educating members. Yeah, and like the, you know, and and I've always said that the MD wants to mess up a golf course, the best person to do it is a greenkeeper. You know, so why would we go and mess up a golf course? We're yeah. doing it for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to find the hard work. We we know it just needs the hard work needs doing. So uh, from and, and again from 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 your membership, from any membership really, um, visitor golfers, however it is, what's the what's the best thing they can do to help maintain a golf course? Is there one thing that goes wrong that they don't do? Or uh, I think it's just, personally, I think it was just the word respect. You know. Think about what the guys have done morning, noon, and night to yeah. make to prepare it. Uh, breaking bunkers, repairing pitch marks, yeah. it's a being trolley signs. We yeah. don't put them out there for a reason. Yeah, uh, it so all baffles me to this day. Though people don't do those things that are a really basic etiquette you'd assume, but it still falls down in places. Yeah, it's, it's what can you do? It's nature of the beast, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's I suppose so. Um, one final question, and I've enjoyed the chat. Is how has green keeping evolved maybe in the last five years and, and where do you see it going? Is it, is it, will, it, will it change? I think as it evolved, I think we still do the same stuff probably since we, we went to college right. and we, we came up. I think the weather's certainly changed. I think uh, through more, I use the word Sky TV, golf on TV every day. I think uh, people sit on a Saturday and Sunday after they're around the golf and watch the Sky Sports and, and see these, this tournament golf yeah. uh, and don't understand that it's probably taken months if not to years get that ready. to get that ready for that four yeah. days of golf yeah. and then they come out on the Monday morning expecting their golf course to be like that so I think that's the downside of it but I think it's uh, the changes we're, we're going through with the climatic stuff and now we've got social media which is a big part of it I think they're yeah. starting to understand uh, where is it going? You know, I think we've got a lot of legislation with chemical bans, and I think that will start to affect the golfers. And as long as the, the members understand that, you know, we can't spray for worms, we can't spray for grubs, uh, fungicides for diseases on turf is getting less and less. Right. Uh, and so you are going to see a bit of scarring now and again. And but I think with our association and uh, knowledge bases, I think a lot of greenkeepers are. Are moving and uh, we've got to move in the right direction. Yeah, versus, yeah. I use the word sustainability, but you know we've got to try to adapt to them changes. We've got to adapt. We've got to adapt. Mm. You know, everybody adapts to these their own uh, way of life. So it brings me forward. Very good. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks very much. Thanks well, for that, coming down. I think that um, I, I just found out I haven't been here perhaps a couple of years, but I can I can assure you that I played uh, where, uh, Saint Anne's Old Links. Uh, a few times back when Stuart was there and of course was in immaculate condition. He's doing exactly the same here, it's always in superb condition. I've just been out today even though it's December the 13th, it's blinking freezing out there but just a quick walk to the 18th green. He top, does a top top job here and uh, like I said I thank him for uh, that quick chat uh, and, and speaking to us on this channel. Uh, as ever Comments down below and I will answer any questions uh, that I can. Thank you for watching, hit that like button and uh, I'll see you all very soon.